remembering Fumilayo Rasam Kuti, Nigerian's lioness of Lisabi. Not too long ago in Africa, Nigeria, on February 18, 1977, approximately 1,000 soldiers stormed a compound in Lagos. It belonged to the famed Afrobeat musician and critic of Nigerian military government, Fela and Nicola Bokuti. During the raid, Kuti's 76-year-old mother, Fumilayo Rasom Kuti, was thrown from a second-story window. She sustained injuries from which she never recovered and died at the General Hospital in Lagos on April 13, 1979. But Rasom Kuti was not just her last mom. The anti-colonial activist and feminist was in many ways the mother of the nation. Vulnerable Victor Sotunde, now 88, and a retired priest from the Anglican communion of Abiyokuta in Nigeria, remembers Rasam Kuti from his days as a young boarding student at Abiyokuta Grammar School. Her husband, Reverend Israel Olodotun Rasam Kuti, was the school principal, and the couple lived on the premises with their children. She was well known to youngsters as the leader of the Abiyokuta Women's Union. So Tunde, due to her activism, she was given the traditional title of Bere, which is usually bestowed on female leaders, and translates as first of equals. On the British colony indirect rule, Nigeria had been divided into 24 provinces for administrative reasons. Each province comprises of divisions and districts. Abiyokuta province in southern Nigeria had two divisions, Egba and Egbado, which were divided into smaller districts. Each division and district was administered by a sole native authority. Abiyokuta town, where Rasum Kuti was from, was the administrative headquarters for Egba Division. As the leader of AWU in the years before Nigeria declared independence from Britain in 1960, Rasum Kuti often spoke to British district officials to explain our organization's position. Best captured by their slogan, no taxation, no presentation. At the meeting, she would speak in the Yoruba language, leaving officials crumbling for an interpreter. Rasum Kuti read against what she had said were unfair taxes levied on small traders, many of whom were women who she led in colorful campaigns. After one victory over water in 1959, the Daily Times of Nigeria reported that the thousands of supporters of the Federation of Nigerian Women Union which are formed out of the Awu dance around Abiyokuta town. The celebration had been triggered by the deferment of a proposed scheme in which women in a bad division would be asked to pay two shillings for water, while those in the district paid one. This was too much for most women or were either petty traders or unemployed. It was Rasum Kuti's latest victory in what was widely regarded as a war to end the unfair taxes imposed by the colonial government and implemented through the SNA. The SNA was headed by the traditional ruler of Abiyokuta, Obasa Ladakbo Ademola II. The women's revolt against taxation 
had been rumbling for more than a decade before the water raid victory. In 1918, tax policies had been introduced that required women as young as 15, which they were considered marriageable, including those who were unemployed, to pay three shillings a year as income tax. Men, on the other hand, did not have to pay it until they were 18. It was said government agents went about raiding homes and stripping girls of their clothes in order to assess their age for the purpose of taxation. And as the work was based on commission, extortion and abuse were rife. Rassam Kuti formed the AWU, A-W-U, in 1946 to defend, protect, preserve and promote the social, economic, cultural and political rights and interests of the women in Egba land. Our aims and objectives were outlined in a document in 1947 called the Awu's grievances in one of the subheadings in which was stripped naked, it contained a list of wrongdoings by the traditional rulers for misusing his authority and by the administration for not providing medical education facilities for women. A food price control policy had also been introduced by the colonial government during the Second World War which, in addition to the tax, further hurt female petty traders when they could not pay. Their goods or produce were often seized by agents working on behalf of the SNA. After several years of complaint, the women mobilized under the leadership of Rasam Kuti and in December 1947, laid siege to the palace of Oba Ademola II where they chanted war songs day and night to the mad suspicion of the tax. Rasum Kuti became known around the country for her activism. She had regularly speak engagement on women's rights both at home and overseas in toward our region, raising awareness about women's political voting rights. Born on October 25, 1900, Rasum Kuti attended the co-educational Abiyokuta Grammar School where she was the first female student to enroll. In 1919, she went to Britain to study at Wisham Hall Schools for Girls in Cheshire where she would study subjects such as French, elocution, music, dress making. But before she returned to Nigeria in 1922, she demonstrated the first sign of a rejection of British imperialism, dropping her Christian names of Francis, Abigail, and adopting a Yoruba name, Oluwa Fumilayo, shortened to Oluwa Fumi or Fumilayo, meaning God has given me joy. In 1925, she married Israel Olodutun, Rasom Kuti, an educationist and co founder of the Nigerian Teachers Union. The couple had four children, Dolupo, Olikoye, Olufela, Fela Beko, and worked as teachers. Iyalo de Alaba Lonsen, a community elder who became the first female president of the Abiyokuta Chambers of Commerce, as well as of the National Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mine, and Agriculture, remembers Rasum Koti as a disciplinary at school. It was, however, in 1943 Great Whip and 1948 Tax Revolt, which earned Ransom Kuti the title Lioness of Lesabi, Lesabi being the traditional hero of Egba people in the press. The Great Whip episode saw women shed tears over the burden of income tax. According to March 1959, report in South Africans Draw Magazine, Thousands of Abiyokuta women went about shedding tears. The Alake, the title of the traditional ruler Oba Ladakwa Ademola II, 
and the authorities could do nothing to stop it and gave way to the women's demand. In December 1947, Rasum Kuti's husband arranged a meeting of men from Abiyokuta town, during which they decided to support the demands of their wives and urge the traditional rulers to explore other ways of generating revenue. The meeting had a prolonged siege of his palace, forced Oba Ademola II to act. He suspended taxation of women and went into exile in Oshobo, a town more than 200 kilometers, 124 miles away. In March 1959, Rasam Kuti told Drum, so we gave a hair of a time to the chiefs, the governments, to all those who were responsible for the systematic popularization of the mass of the people. But there was no doubt as to where Rasun Kuti laid to blame for the plight of Nigerian women. We had a qualitative Britain came, she wrote in an article published in the Britain Communist newspaper, The Daily Worker. In it, she noted that before the British arrival in Nigeria, life was mainly agriculture and there was a fewer and fairer division of labor between men and women. The men cultivated the land and it was chiefly the duty of men to reap. Women owned property, traded and exercised considerable political and social influence in society. They were responsible for crowning the kings on coronation days. Whatever disabilities they existed were endured by men and women alike. In 1947, Inamdi Azikiwe of the of the National Council of Nigeria in Cameroon, who would later become Nigerian first president, invited Rasum Kuti to travel to Britain to meet the Secretary of State, Sir Arthur Creek Jones. She was the only woman in the seven persons delegation when she triumphantly boarded the Amazora, which set sail from Lagos to on June 26. The purpose of their visit was to discuss the limitations of the 1946 Richard Constitution in British colonial fisheries, named after Nigerian Governor General Sir Arthur Riches. It was the successor legal framework to the 1922 Clifford Constitution and was meant to ensure a better representation of Nigerians in administration of the country. In 1949, Rasum Kuti was nominated by citizens to represent Abiyokuta at the provincial level of the General Constitution Conference, which was scheduled to take place in January 1950. The aim of the conference was to collate the views of all Nigerians as part of a nationwide discussion on the new constitution. Rasum Kuti was the only woman to deliberately to the, on the proceedings at the provincial level on what ultimately became known as the 1951 Macpherson Constitution. But not everyone agreed with Ransom Kuti activists and our opponent found willingness to allies in their own press. The Nigerian Tribune newspaper once called the Awo Terrorist Women Union of Abiyokuta. Hello guys, be sure to stay tuned for the part 2 of this beautiful story about this great woman. The first Nigerian woman to indeed drive a car. Anyways, if you're new here, consider subscribing and be part of this awesome family. And uh, be sure to subs um, share to your family and friends as well. I'll see you guys in my next video. Cheers and have a wonderful life. Bye.